Hey guys, Vertus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series. And in today's episode, we're going to be continuing on with the process of creating a heads up display inside of Unreal Engine. So if you haven't watched the previous episode, I advise that you go ahead and do so using the annotation in the bottom left hand corner. And I also advise that you check out the episode on how you can set up player health damaging and all of that cool stuff as you really do need it for this episode. Anyway, continuing on where we left off. In the previous episode, we showed you how to get all your elements from a PSD, a Photoshop file or any other kind of image, get it into the engine or use the normal um, content like progress bars and text and stuff and get it into the designer. But right now it's very static, it doesn't change and it doesn't do anything. We actually need to make it do something. So right now it's going to stay exactly the same when the player's health uh, is affected by these little robots here. So that's the sort of functionality that we need to set up. It's quite simple really and it's through the use of using something called bindings. And these bindings essentially change um, you know, some kind of value based on a function. So if I was to create a binding for this text. I would set that to the player health variable so it shows the number from the player health variable and that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So go to your text or any other kind of element that you want to change based on something else. Go ahead and click it and then go down to content, go to text and press binding and go to create binding. And from here, we now actually have a function that we can use to affect, not affect, but change the value uh, of what's displayed, basically, the content. So what we need to do here is we need to get the player health variable, and then we need to display it on the screen in the form of that little text that you saw there. It's quite simple, really. So first things first, I'm going to break the link on here. And before we can actually get the return node, you know, we need to do a few things. So firstly, I'm just going to quickly explain what we've got here. You've got a return node here, which is um, basically the last point in your little function and essentially returns a value. And that value is going to be, you know, the binding what is actually displayed. So what we need to do is essentially we need to access the player character. We need to get the player health variable we need to convert it to a string and hook it up into the return value. It's quite simple really, so let's go ahead and do it. So from the start node over here, just go ahead and drag it out and hook it up to cast to third person character. Now the reason why we're doing this is because it's going to allow us to communicate quite easily with the third, per uh, third person character blueprint or whatever character blueprint you're working with. and. The reason why we need to access this is because it actually stores the player health variable. Well, it will do for those of you that um, that actually followed the previous episode. Make sure you do go ahead and check them out. Anyway, just go ahead and go to object and drag that out and go to get player character because that's what we're trying to access. The next thing we need to do is we need to hook up as third person character. We need to go ahead and from that get a reference to the player health or whatever you called the player health variable really. And then we need to drag that out one more time and we need to convert this from an integer to a string. So to string, just go ahead and find that and hook it up to the return value. Now the next thing we need to do here is hook up these two things, cast to third person character to the return node. So it, it should all work just fine now. So if I go ahead and press play, jump in, once these take away my damage, you can see my value for health is now going down. It's pretty simple really. Now what we need to do is go ahead and set up the same thing for the progress bar. I'm hoping that you know showing you all of this stuff is actually going to give you a good understanding of bindings, how they work and you know some of the logic used to create it. So if you haven't named your binding already. I advise you go ahead and do so. I'm going to call this health text just so it doesn't get complicated later on. So go over to your progress bar. I'm just going to go ahead and click it in the hierarchy tab in the bottom left here. And then I'm going to go down to progress. It's because we need to change the percentage value based on the player health. So if I go ahead and zoom in when I change that from zero to, a uh, to one, you can see it changing. 
but it's also not going to work very well with our health variable because it actually goes from zero to 100. So we're going to have to use a bit of maths to convert that value ready to be put into the return node. So anyway, let's go ahead and go ahead and press, sorry, not go ahead and go ahead, um, go ahead and press create binding. And from here, we've got to do the same thing. First things first, we need to cast to the third person character and do the same thing, get player character. So we can actually access that variable. So once again, get a reference to the player health. But this time, what we need to do is we need to convert it to a float is that's what it's asking for return value float. So go ahead and do that to float. And then inside of here, we need to do some maths to actually change the variable from, you know, the multiplication, it goes from zero to 100 instead of zero to one. So we need to essentially divide it by 100. It's quite simple, really, just go to float divided by float. And this can act, uh, be accessed by just, you know, using a little slash here, float divided by float, hook this up to the return value, whoops, just press control Z there. Let's hook this up straight in there. And uh, we essentially need to divide it by 100. Boom, should all be good now. Just go ahead and hook that up. And you can see essentially what we're doing here is once again, we're getting a reference to player health. We're converting it to a float as that's what the return value should be. And then we're dividing that, uh, that float by 100 to convert it to something that the progress bar can actually use. Because, you know, right now, it uses a value going from zero to 100, uh, from zero to one. So it should all work, but once again, just go ahead and make sure that you name it. I'm gonna call it health and then health bar. Compile, press play, and let's have a look, see if it's gonna work. There you go, the health bar is now going down when it damages. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for creating a HUD. It's really simple. Um, all the fundamentals are exactly the same for creating in other stuff. Um, you know, if you want to add in stuff like sprint energy or mana or whatever you're doing really, you know, it's essentially just a process of binding information or elements to a variable and then displaying it on the screen. It's quite simple. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, so thanks for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and uh, I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.